Vamos a ver uh, sobre el Evangelio de Mateo. Because when Yeshua quotes something to those people, porque cuando Yeshua dice um, palabras a las gentes, many times we don't understand the context of what he's saying. Muchas veces no podemos entender el contexto en el cual él está hablando. Because we're thinking like Westerners. Porque estamos pensando como gente del oeste. And we're thinking like people that are 2,000 years from when Yeshua said these words. Y somos gentes que estamos 2,000 años después de Yeshua. So how do we know how to really understand what Yeshua was saying? Así que cómo podemos saber lo que está diciendo Yeshua? Because you can come to an improper conclusion. Porque puedes uh, llegar a una conclusión muy inapropiada. Because you don't understand the context and that's what most of the church has done. Porque no puedes entender el contexto en lo cual él está hablando, que es lo que hace la iglesia cristiana. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to try it anyway. Así que esto es lo que vamos a hacer en este estudio hoy en la noche. Because there's a lot of scriptures to go through. Porque hay, son muchas escrituras uh, sobre qué repasar. And I didn't even do all 96 of Matthew. Y no hice las uh, 96 veces uh, que es citado en el Mateo. Uh, uh, Evelyn or the man Jairus, can you put the uh, link back up on the screen, please? For Julio. All right, moving on to slide number three. Okay, continuando con la página electrónica tres. Let's start with Matthew, Matthew chapter one, please. Vamos a empezar en el Evangelio de Mateo capítulo uno. Matthew chapter one, verse 18 through 25. Mateo capítulo uno, versículos 18 al 25. Man, that's, uh, let's go to the Old Testament, Betsy, and make a right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop, me I'll stop messing with you. <laughs> you know the right, uh, they come right that day. I'm very happy because I actually stopped in it. Did you see that the lady is afraid? Uh-huh. Oh, my God, I'm very happy. <laughs> All right, let's read Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Mateo, dies, uh, primera de Mateo, uh, 18 Below. al 25. Okay. Ha here's how the birth of Yeshua the Messiah took place when his mother Miriam was engaged to Yosef before they were married. She was found to be pregnant with the Ruach, from the Ruach HaKodesh. Her husband-to-be, Yosef, was a man who did what was right, so he made plans to break the engagement quietly rather than to put her to public shame. But while he was thinking about this, an angel of Adonai and I appeared to him in a dream and said, Yosef, son of David, do not be afraid to take Miriam home with you as your wife, for what has been conceived in her is from the Ruach HaKodesh. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Yeshua, which means Adonai saves, because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened in order to fulfill what Adonai had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Im Anuel, which means God is with us. When Yosef awoke, he did what the angel of Adonai had told him to do. He took Miriam home to be his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until she had given birth to a son. They named him Yeshua. All right. Uh, any question? Pregunta? In Hebrew, there's no J. How, how was uh, Yosef? Yosef. 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 Yeah, yeah, Yosef. Why? Y. Yeah. Okay. So it's Yosef. No, no, or you can say it like Evelyn. Just sure. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you can add Will to Tris. Joshua is Yahoshua. Okay. Josue is Yahoshua. Okay. So here we have. The foretelling of Yeshua. Así que tenemos aquí el, uh, uh, el porvenir de Yeshua. Okay, uh, it's important to understand that Yosef did not have relations with Miriam until after Yeshua was born. Es muy importante de entender que Josué, jo, José no tuvo relaciones uh, maritales uh, con uh, Miriam. Okay, so let's then move on to slide number four. 
Vamos a la página 4. Turn to Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 7. Vamos al libro de Isaías, capítulo 7, uh, versículos 10 al 17. Okay. And Will and Raina, if you want, there's the PowerPoint for this evening is up there. Just uh, go to that uh, link. You'll be able to download the PowerPoint for this evening. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10 through 17. Capítulo 7, versículos 10 al 17 en el libro de Isaías. And I, sp okay. and I spoke to, again, to Ahaz. He said, ask God and I, your God, to give you a sign. Ask it anywhere, from the depths of Sheol to the heights above. But Ahaz answered, I won't ask, I won't test Adonai. Then the prophet said, listen here, house of David, he's trying people's patience with a small thing for you that you must try the patience of God as well. Therefore, Adonai himself will give you people a sign, the young woman or the virgin will become pregnant, or it says Alma there in the Hebrew, uh, bear a son to name him Im Anuel. By the time he knows enough to refuse evil and choose good, he will have to eat curdled milk and wild honey. Yes, before the child knows enough to refuse evil and choose good, the land whose two kings you dread will be left abandoned. And I will bring the king of Ashur on you, your people in your father's house. These will be days worse than, than any you've known since Ephraim broke loose from Yehuda. So it's important to uh, understand the context. Es muy importante de entender el contexto. Okay, so here in Yeshiyahu, Aquí en Isaías, um, you get a time frame when the Messiah would be born. Tenemos un cuadro uh, cuando el Mesías iba a ser iba a nacer. It's after these two kings were put down. Es uh, después de estos dos reyes que uh, murieron. And we know when Messiah was born that Rome was in charge. Y sabemos que cuando Yeshua nació Roma era encargado. Now we know that these two kingdoms have never risen again since that time. Ahora sabemos que estos dos reinos no ha, se han levantado desde ese tiempo. Uh, we also see here in Isaiah 7:14. Y aquí en Isaías uh, 7:14. The young woman, or in the Hebrew it says Alma, which means a virgin. En uh, el young woman. en el hebreo la palabra ahí para virgen es Alma, que significa eso, una virgen. Alma. Alma. Means virgin, young girl. Uh, significa virgen o jovencita. So Miriam was somewhere between 14 and 16 years old. Así que eh, el pensamiento es que Miriam tenía 14 a 16 años cuando Yeshua nació. Alma is a very young girl. Alma es una jovencita. Mm -hmm. Es una mujer muy joven. Okay. Um, okay. So um, what else do we have here? Um, This also talks about signs. Uh, signs? Signs. Signs. Uh, esto también habla sobre las señales. You know, ask God and I, your God, to give you a sign. Okay. Uh, pues Verse 11. Aquí, uh, el versículo 11, donde fue preguntado uh, sobre una señal. Okay. So there were many signs that Yeshua was coming. Así que uh, había muchas señales uh, que uh, señalaban la, el nacimiento de Yeshua. Okay. So this is just the beginning of this, you know, study tonight. Así que este es el comienzo de este estudio. But we're going to get into other more in-depth things that Yeshua says. Pero later. vamos a llegar a cosas más profundas que dijo Yeshua después. But you see here that Yosef was going to get a sign. Pero podemos ver que José iba a recibir una señal. You, then you got to have the Alma here, the young y ahora, lady. Y ahora tienes uh, la Virgen. And then you have his name in verse 14. Y tienes el, uh, su nombre en el versículo 14. So, if you ever ask a Jew Así que si le preguntas a un judío uh, about Isaiah 7, 14, sobre esto de, que está escrito aquí en el uh, versículo 14 where it says the, the virgin will conceive and bear a son's And his name, name him Im Anuel. Y donde dice aquí la Virgen concibirá y dará a luz a un hijo y te llamará su nombre Emmanuel. How could a son be called God with us? ¿Cómo se puede llamar un hijo Dios con nosotros? 
So now when you read Matthew 1, Ahora cuando lees Mateo 1, you have a greater understanding of what the angel is saying tien, to Miriam. Tienes un mejor entendimiento de lo que el ángel está diciendo a Miriam. It gives a lot more depth to Matthew 1. Le, le da más uh, profundidad a Mateo 1. When you understand the context that was be, it was being said. Cuando entiendes el contexto en lo cual fue dicho. Okay, moving on to slide number 5. Uh, continuando con la página 5. Go back to Matthew chapter 3 now. Vamos a Mateo capítulo 3. If you want to get Mateo, touch with Jane, he, uh, Jen will open up the phone. Okay. Matthew 3, verse 1 through 3. El Evangelio de Mateo, capítulo 3, versículo 1 al 3. It uh, says, It was during those days that Yochanan the Immerser arrived in the desert of Yehuda and began proclaiming the message. Turn from your sins to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is a man Yeshayahu was talking about when he said, The voice is someone crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of Adonai. Make straight paths for him. Okay, so even in verse 3, Hasta en el versículo 3, you're told where to look for the prophecy. Podemos ver donde se puede encontrar la profecía. But when you go to the prophecy Pero cuando vayas a la profecía, and read what it says, y lees lo que dice, it gives you much more in depth what was going on in Israel, te da una mejor idea de lo que estaba pasando en Israel when Yochanan was saying these words. Cuando Juan estaba diciendo estas palabras. And it then gives you a better understanding y te da un mejor entendimiento of what Yeshua was coming into. De lo que Yeshua estaba viniendo. Once you read the prophecy. Cuando leas la profecía. Right, go to slide number six. Vamos a la página seis. And turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Y ahora vamos a Isaías capítulo 40. We're going to look at verse one through five. Versículo uno al cinco. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, like, but when they were talking about this in, in the Old Testament, the... Israel was really went down the down the tube big time. I think the world today makes them look like yeah. they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Isaiah, yes, Yahu, chapter 40. Isaías capítulo 40. Verse 1 through 5. Versículo 1 al 5. Comfort and keep comforting my people, says your God. Tell Yerushalayim to take heart. Proclaim to her that she has completed her time of service, that her guilt has been paid off, that she has received at the hand of Adonai double for all her sins. A voice cries out, clear a road through the desert for Adonai. Level the highway in the Arava for our God. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill lowered. The bumpy places made level and the crags became plain. Then the glory of Adonai will be revealed. All mankind together will see it, or humankind will see it together. The mouth of Adonai has spoken. So this also gives you a time frame. Esto nos da un cuadro. In verse 2. En el versículo 2. That Israel would be back in the land. Que Israel iba a estar dentro de su tierra otra vez. Now we know from the end of Malachi, Ahora sabemos que en el, uh, la últimas escrituras de Malaquías, to the beginning of the Shah, al comienzo del Nuevo Testamento, Israel, was conquered six times Israel fue conquistado seis veces in a 400 year period. en un periodo de 400 años. So she re Israel recibió double for all the bad that she did. Israel recibió un castigo, un doble castigo por todo lo que hizo. Okay. Now, when you read the Matthew 3 scripture, ahora cuando lees las escrituras eh, del capítulo 3 en Mateo, you're seeing Yochanan, puedes ver a Juan, being this one that's crying out in the wilderness, que es alguien que está clamando en, en el desierto. You also and then when you're talking to a Jewish person Así que cuando estás hablando con una persona judía, and you're trying to present Yeshua to them y le estás tratando de presentar a Yeshua a ellos, 
you ask them about this Isaiah scripture. Le pregunta sobre esta escritura en Isaías. Is there anybody in the desert right now calling repent? Hay alguien en el desierto acaso que está diciendo arrepiéntense? Or you can ask them throughout history from 2000 years ago. O puedes preguntarle sobre la historia hace 2000 años. Has there been anybody else crying out in the wilderness? Acaso hay alguien que ha estado clamando en el desierto? So here you have now the context of what was being said in Matthew 3. Ahora tenemos aquí el contexto en cual fue dicho esa escritura en Mateo. So if you look at verse 2 again. Así que si miras el versículo 2 otra vez. Tell you Jerusalem to take heart, proclaim to her that she has completed her time of service, that her guilt has been paid off, that she has received at the hand of Adonai double for her sins. So this is what was going on when Yochanan was out there eating bugs and honey. <laughs> Así que esto era lo que estaba pasando cuando Juan estaba comiendo eh, langostas y uh, miel. You know, a, a grouping of people uh, un grupo de personas that had been conquered many times que han sido conquistadas muchas veces. And what happens when you get conquered? ¿Qué pasa cuando eres conquistado? Do you get to practice your religion freely? ¿Acaso practicas tu religión uh, libremente? No. No. And then when you get your freedom, y luego cuando recibes tu libertad, are you really knowing what you should be doing right at first? ¿Acaso sabes lo que se debería de hacer? So here, this is what Yochanan was doing. Así que esto es lo que estaba diciendo Juan aquí. He was crying out in the wilderness. Él estaba clamando en el desierto. Clear your oats. Uh, Get these Doritos out of your sí. face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost, I lost track of what you said. Uh, limpien los, say, limpien los, las, las, las calles. Uh, saquen todo eso de su mente. Make a straight path to the Lord. Hagan una, una vereda directa al Señor. But now when you read it in context, Pero ahora cuando lo lees en contexto, it helps you to go deeper. Ahora te ayuda a profundizarte un poco más. Right, Clara? Yes. Are you sure? Sí. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, going on to slide number five. Ahora continuando. Uh, slide number seven, I'm sorry. Uh, continuando con la página siete aquí. Turn to Matthew chapter four. Vamos a Mateo capítulo cuatro. If anybody's got questions or comments, just put your hand up on the internet si alguien, there. Si alguien tiene preguntas o comentarios, por favor, uh, escriban algo. I think doing this, it helps you really to understand the chapters a lot. Porque yo creo que haciendo esto nos uh, ayuda a entender los capítulos más mejor. Okay, Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. Mateo 4, versículo 1 al 4. Then the Spirit led Yeshua up into the wilderness to be tempted by the adversary. After Yeshua had fasted 40 days and nights, he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, order these stones to become bread. But he answered, the Tanakh says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of Adonai. Amen. Now I'm sure lots of Christians Ahora, can quote this. Muchos cristianos pueden citar esta um, Escritura aquí. Has anybody ever heard this in the Christian church? ¿Acaso ha, han oído esto en la iglesia? Now, what do you think this means, Betsy? ¿Qué, qué piensas? Uh, ¿Qué quiere decir esto, Betsy? If you were explaining this to somebody, si estás explicando esto a alguien, what would these four verses say to you? ¿Qué dicen estos cuatro versículos aquí? Claro, you're next. Well, uh, el, los primeros cuatro versículos ¿Qué, ¿qué es el significado de eso? What was to you in the o, that was being said ¿o qué fue explicado cuando estabas en la iglesia cristiana? she says they don't speak the way we speak here <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah. uh, ok Clarabel what what would these churches say to you? ¿Qué, qué te dirían estas iglesias a ti? Did, did you ever hear a sermon on the no, men? No, es que si yo diría no creen. Oh, she says that they don't believe this. <laughs> she says that she would tell the pastor that that Shabbat is on Saturday. The pastor would say no. 
that it would be Sunday. Uh, well, we'll get to that. Okay. What, what about these four verses? ¿Qué tal de estos cuatro versículos ha, aquí? Have you ever heard a, a, a sermon on, on this? ¿Has oído acaso una prédica sobre esto? No. Wow. I was at the Christian church and I heard this. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chris. Um, uh, alrighty. Uh, Julio. Julio. Over there in Colombia. In Colombia. Mi hijo. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about verse 4? Well, uh, Rabbi, um, I, I, I might remember uh, uh, Thank you, buddy. a play, uh, I, I mean, uh, a sermon or something like that for, uh, about this portion and uh, never in, 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 in a Christian church. But uh, in my point of view, I see here um, uh, one of the uh, doctrines Open of the door. Christian churches. And it is, uh, is uh, when, when, when the Hasatan, uh, he tried to convince Yeshua to satisfy his, his uh, needs first. So it's almost the same thing that the church, that the Christian church are doing right now with the doctrine of prosperity. Hmm. Uh, uh, they, they, they teach about uh, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to um, fix everything in your uh, uh, economical um, on, uh, uh, money, in your prosperity in your life first than any, anything before, and that, that's why they're preaching right now. So they are doing the same thing like Hasatan did with Yeshua mm -hmm. in the desert. Uh, that's what I see in, in this part of the of the scripture. But they never, they never talk about uh, in, in a truly way about this. Uh, I, I never remember a, a preach about about that. Okay. Entendió lo que dijo. Okay. The phone line is open if you wish to. Download. Okay, let me just translate for yeah. Clarabel. Uh, dice que eh, sa Satanás quiso satisfacer. Eh, que, que Yeshua hiciera lo que él quería, lo que él le estaba demandando, pero Yeshua le, le habló la escritura, le habló la palabra, no tentes a, no tentarás a, a Dios, well, well, a well, Dios. Well, y lo mismo está haciendo la, la iglesia cristiana sobre la prosperidad, see, que quieren okay. satisfacer el, los deseos de ellos. Uh, well, this, this, this is even more amazing that okay. they never preached about this. Uh, que esto es más asombroso que no han enseñado sobre esto, sobre este tema aquí. Mary? They don't, the Christian, they don't tell you, that I have never heard from any person that this part of the, they don't take it what this comes from, they don't tell you. It's like some mm -hmm. teacher, they might teach you, it's so new, this, you should, made this thing up. <laughs> he made um, it up as um, he goes along. Well, some, I mean, some, they might come up, some teach, some, some uh, yeah. pastor might say something like that, or they don't tell you, uh, and they don't, they don't get be like, they follow uh, themselves. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. I mean, I mean, this is a, an incredible th thing. All right, the Manjaris have a, okay, a commentary. The Manjaris have a commentary. Yeah. You got thing with the audio, Brittany? Yeah, I was uh, I was checking the um, verse four, and uh, I see there on the on the on the dictionary that it says uh, uh, when it says word, it means the living the uh, how it was the the uh, living voice. So uh, my understanding there is that we we are supposed to um, our lives are supposed to be focused all, also and most of all in Torah and the in the in the words that come from the living voice mm -hmm. and not only from uh, what is good for our for our for our uh, body. 
but we have to also take care of our spiritual body. And the only way to do that is just is the, um, uh, listen the words of the living voice that it says there. That's all I want to say. Well, well it, it's, it's amazing that I, I thought everybody would have a, a, a comment that they heard preachings on this. Es asombroso que yo pensaría que uh, hubiera varios que que hubieran dicho que han, uh, los pastores han hablado sobre este tema aquí. Okay, well let's go see where okay. what Yeshua is quoting. Vamos a ver lo que Yeshua está citando aquí. Okay, move on to slide number 8. Vamos and a la Deuteronomy página 8. En Deuteronomio 8. Deuteronomy Oops. 8 verse 1 through 3. Deuteronomio 8. This is versículo what, 1 al 3. Uh -huh. This is what Yeshua is quoting from. De aquí es donde está hablando Yeshua. Okay. Uh, Devarim 8, verse 1 through 3 says, All the mitzvot I'm giving you today, you are to take care to obey, so that you will live, increase your numbers, enter and take possession of the land Adonai swore about to your ancestors. You are to remember everything of the way in which Adonai led you these 40 years in the desert humbling and testing you in order to know what was in your heart, whether you would obey his mitzvot or not. He humbled you, allowing you to become hungry, and then fed you with man, which neither you nor your ancestors had ever known, to make you understand that a person does not live on food alone, but on everything that comes from the mouth of on and I. So when you're talking to people, Así que cuando estás hablando con gente, or you're reading the account of Yeshua being tempted by the devil, o estás leyendo sobre los hechos, los acontecimientos de Yeshua y Satanás en el desierto, what does Yeshua quote? ¿Qué es lo que cita Yeshua? He says we have to follow all the mitzvot, the commandments. Que tenemos que seguir todos los mandamientos del Señor. Because if you read it in context of chapter 8 here, porque si lo lees en contexto con el capítulo 8 aquí, ahora, one. ahora mira el versículo 1. All the mitzvot I am giving you today, you are to take care to obey, so that you will live, increase your numbers, and enter and take possession of the land. Adonai swore about to your ancestors. All the mitzvot. Todos los mandamientos. Not just two. No nomás dos. So when Yeshua is, you know, you have all those Spanish people, we're stomping on the devil's head. Fuck you, uh, cuando, ah. cuando, miren, cuando miren eso en la iglesia, uh, especialmente en la, la hispana, que es, todos están pisoteando you know, what, la cabeza what, what, del diablo. There's a Spanish song where you stand on una, the devil's head. Que hay una canción en la iglesia cristiana que le ponen el, el pie en la cabeza al diablo. Hmm. What, come on, what's the song, Betsy? What's the, sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're stamping on the devil's head. Que están pisoteando la uh, cabeza del, de Satanás. How did Yeshua stamp on the devil's head? ¿Cómo fue que Yeshua pisoteó la cabeza de Satanás? When he was tempted. Cuando él fue te, uh, ten, uh, tentado. Thank you. He said, he you live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Él dijo, tú vives sobre cada palabra que viene de Jehová. So, so anytime somebody wants to say to you, Así que cuando alguien te quiere decir algo, you don't need the laws anymore. Que no necesitas las leyes. Now you can take them to Matthew 4. Ahora puedes llevarlos a Mateo 4. And verse 4. Versículo 4. And then you take them back to Deuteronomy 8. Y luego los llevas a Deuteronomy 8. Verse 1 through 3. Versículo 1 al 3. 4, 4. Mm -hmm. Mateo 4, 4. 1 al 4. Okay. Y Deuteronomy 8, 1 al 3. Okay. Deuteronomy 8. Pero, oh, 1. Last week, right? I'm walking. When you see somebody, you say, hey, how you doing? You know who did the pastor? And he told me, hey, Betsy, how you doing? Your, your old pastor, Betsy? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. 
So you have problems, so you get a vacation? Yeah. Oh, boy. Why? I'd like that. I, I should get like a year off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Betsy estaba diciendo que uh, ella se encontró con un pastor, uh, ex -pastor. su ex pastor. Uh, y le estaba contando que uh, él, 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 ella no le preguntó nada, pero él fue el que le dijo a ella que estaba teniendo muchos problemas en su iglesia y que iba a tomar una, un mes de vacaciones <laughs> pagadas. <laughs> All right, let's move on to slide number nine. Ok, vamos a continuar el, uh, en la página nueve, Matthew por favor. Matthew chapter 4, Matthew Yahoo. Chapter Mat four. Mateo capítulo 4, versículo, versículo 5 y 6 ahora. No, Evelyn, it's not multiple choice. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Mateo 4, versículo 5 y 6. Then the adversary took him to the holy city and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, jump. For the Tanakh says... He will order his angels to be responsible for you. They will support you with their hands so that you will not hurt your feet on the stone. Hmm. Okay, so the devil is saying, hey, yeah, jump off. Así que vemos aquí que Satanás le está diciendo, brinca. Okay, so let's see this in context now. Ahora vamos a ver esto en contexto. Slide number 10. Página 10. Turn to Psalm 91. Vamos al Salmo 91. Okay, verse 1 through 12. Versículo 1 al 12. Psalm 91. Salmo 91. Verse 1 through 12. Versículo 1 al 12. Good way, Isaiah, make a right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all depends which Bible you're in. Yeah. yeah. Stearns does a uh, chronological. Oh, Sorry, mine is from Job. Oh, it's from Eo. Oh. Interesting. All right, Psalm 91, verse 1 through 12 says, You who live in the shelter of Elion, who spend your nights in the shadow of Shaddai, who say to Adonai, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, he will rescue you from the trap of the hunter and from the plague of calamities. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His truth is a shield and protection. You will not fear the terrors of the night or the arrows that fly by day or the plague that roams in the dark or the scourge that wreaks havoc at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. Only keep your eyes open and you will see how the wicked are punished. For you have made Adonai the most high. Who is my refuge, your dwelling place? No disaster will happen to you. No calamity will come ne near your tent, for he will order his angels to care for you and guard you wherever you go. They will carry you on their hands so that you won't trip on a stone. So when Yeshua was saying to Satan, Así que cuando Yeshua estaba diciéndole esto a Satanás, you know, when Satan told him to jump off the temple, cuando Satanás lo tentó que, se, que brincara, he was saying to Satan, él le estaba diciendo a Satanás, Adonai is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust, verse 2. Adonai es en quien yo confío, versículo 9. I trust in him and I follow his ways. Yo espero en él y yo sigo sus maneras. And he will take care of me. Y él me cuidará. Amen. So now you understand the context of what Yeshua is saying to Satan. Ahora puedes entender el contexto en cual Yeshua estaba diciéndole esto a Satanás. That even if, if you're in a very bad position. Que si estás en una posición muy mala. The Lord will protect us. El Señor te va a proteger. And the angels will guide us. Y los ángeles nos guiarán. And they will guard us. Y nos guardarán. But now there's something else that happens in this passage. Pero ahora vamos a ver algo que pasa en esta escritura. Just go, go back to Matthew 4. Vamos a Mateo 4, versículo 7 ahora. Or chapter 4, verse 7. Matthew 4, verse 7. Mateo 4, versículo 7 ahora. It says, Yeshua replied to him, but it also says, do not put Adonai, your God, to the test. Amen. So now if you understand 
Psalm 91, Ahora si entiendes Salmo 91. That you're testing God and going out and see if you'll get shot by arrows. Que estás tentando a Dios aquí. And, and tempting God by driving, you know, 100 miles an hour. Y tentando a Dios, uh, por ejemplo, si vas a, a, a ir en la carretera muy, muy veloz. Or doing something that's uh, contradictory to Scripture. O hacer algo que está contradiciendo las Escrituras. Yeshua then says to say, don't test God. Yeshua le está diciendo, no tentes a Dios. But you have to understand yeah. that in context also. Pero tienes que entender eso en el contexto también. Remember, this battle between Yeshua and Satan. Acuérdate que esta batalla entre Yeshua y Satanás. Satan has been around since the founding of the world. Satanás ha estado vivo desde cuando el mundo fue fundado. Satan lived in God's palace. Satanás vivió en el palacio de Dios. He knows the Father very well. Él conoce al Padre muy bien. So he knows scripture. Satan knows scripture very well. Así que él conoce las escrituras muy bien. So when Yeshua says one line to Satan, Así que cuando Yeshua le dice una línea a Satanás, he's saying a whole chapter to Satan. Él le está diciendo una, un capítulo a Satanás. You know, it's sort of like an old married couple. Es como una pareja que ya, ya están casado por muchos años. Jen could just look at one. Jennifer puede ver a Juan. Give him the eye. Y me puede dar el ojo. And Juan knows he's in trouble. Y Juan sabe que está en problemas. That's never going to happen. <laughs> If she can give him those eyes for um, Juan. <laughs> those eyes she gives me. <laughs> But, oh, she gave me that. <laughs> she, wait, now you got to do the head. You're Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Texas, that ain't Spanish. <laughs> so when when Yeshua is saying a line to Satan, así que cuando Yeshua le está diciendo a Satanás, he was doing what Jen just did. <laughs> estaba haciendo lo que Jennifer estaba haciendo ahorita. But now Yeshua, <coughs> Yeshua says to Pero, uh, Satan. Pero ahora Yeshua le dice a Satanás. Don't put God to the test. Que no pongas al Señor a tentación. Go on to slide number 12. Vamos ahora a la página 12. And turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Vamos a Deuteronomio capítulo 6. Deuteronomy Devarim 6. Deuteronomio 6. Verse 13 through 19. Versículos 13 al 19. Okay, now we're going to start this. And you got to give the Ruach Ranch five seconds, Brittany. But each time we go to a new scripture, you got to get the page number really quick. Oh, well, you got to jump out of the PowerPoint. Ah, forget it. That's what we do. All right. Verse 13 through 19. Versículo 13 al 19, por favor. <coughs> you, are to, you are to fear Adonai your God. Serve him and swear by his name. You are not to follow other gods chosen from the gods of the peoples around you, because Adonai, your God, who, who is here with you, is a jealous God. If you do, the anger of Adonai, your God, will flare up against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the earth. Do not put Adonai, your God, to the test, as you tested him at Massa. Observe diligently the mitzvot of Adonai and his instructions and laws which he has given you. You are to do what is right and good in the sight of Adonai so that things will go well with you and you will enter and possess a good land. Adonai swore to your ancestors, expelling all your enemies ahead of you as Adonai said. Amen. Okay, so when Yeshua said, Don't put God to the test. Así que cuando Yeshua dice, no pongas, no tentes a Dios. He's quoting this event that happened at Ma uh, Massa. Él está citando este evento que pasó en Massa. Okay, we're going to go to that scripture in a second. Vamos a llegar a esta escritura en un segundo. But also what he's saying to Satan here. Pero también lo que le está diciendo a Satanás. That you're to observe the mitzvot of Adonai, the que debes, commandments. Que debes observar los mandamientos de Dios. Because 
when you don't observe the mitzvot of God, porque cuando no observas los mandamientos de Dios, you're putting God to the test. Entonces estás poniendo a Dios eh, en, en prueba. You know, how long is he going to put up with your you're not following his orders? Y qué tanto va él dejar que no sigas sus mandamientos? And here in verse 18, y aquí en el versículo 18, you are to do what is right and good in the sight of Adonai. Deberías de hacer lo que es bueno y recto ante los ojos de Jehová. So when you're saying, when Yeshua was saying to Satan, así que cuando Yeshua le dice a Satanás, don't put God to the test. No tentes a Dios. He's saying, do what's right, right and good in Father's sight. Haz lo que es recto y bueno en los ojos de Jehová. So you see how much is being said in really just one line. Así que puedes ver lo que está lo que está dicho aquí solamente en una línea. Now look back at verse 16 again. Ahora vamos al versículo 16 ahora. Do not put on an eye your God to the test as you tested him at Massa. Okay? Now let's go on to slide 13. Vamos a la página 13. And let's see what happened at Massa. Y vamos a ver lo que pasó en Massa. Exodus, Shemot 17. Éxodo 17, versículo 1 al 7. Okay, Exodus 17, verse 1 through 7. Éxodo 17, versículo 1 al 7. So, these are the two things that, you know, remember, Satan was at Massa. Ahora, acuérdense que Satanás estaba en Massa. He was there. Él estaba ahí. You know, trying to get, and you'll see that he was there. Y vas a ver que él estaba ahí. Exodus 17, verse 1 through 7. Vamos a ver el, el libro de Éxodo, capítulo 17, del 1 al 7. The whole community of the people of Israel left the seen desert, traveling in stages as Adonai had ordered, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. The people crawled with Moshe, demanding, give us water to drink. But Moshe replied, why pick a fight with me? Why are you testing Adonai? However, the people were thirsty for water there and grumbled against Moshe. For what did you bring us up from Egypt to kill us, our children, our livestock, with thirst? Moshe cried out to Adonai, what am I to do with these people? They're ready to stone me. Adonai answered Moshe, go on ahead of the people and bring with you the leaders of Israel. Take your staff in hand, the one you used to strike the river and go. I will stand in front of you there at the rock at Horeb. If you strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so the people can drink. Moshe did it this in the sight of the leaders. The place was named Massa and Mirava because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested Adonai by asking, is Adonai with us or not? So here, this goes a little deeper. Así que podemos ver aquí que esto se, se aprofundiza más. Now you know what happened at Massa in ahora, the testing. Ahora ya sabes lo que pasó aquí en la prueba de Massa. So when Yeshua says, you shall not put Adonai your God to the test. Así que cuando Yeshua dice, no tentarás a Dios. You have this first part here of the water. Tenemos esta primera parte aquí del agua. But look at the end of verse 7. Pero ahora vamos a ver eh, lo último del uh, versículo 7. The place was named Massa and Mirabal because of the quarreling of the people of Israel because they tested Adonai by asking, is Adonai with us or not? Mm -hmm. What was Yeshua's name? ¿Qué era el nombre de Yeshua? He is to be Im Anuel. Es Im Emmanuel. Im Anuel. Well, in the Spanish. In Hebrew, it's Emmanuel. In Spanish, it's Emmanuel. Okay, God with us. Que significa Dios con nosotros. So you've seen that in verse 7. Ahora podemos ver en el versículo 7. What did Yeshua say? ¿Qué, eh, ¿Qué es lo que dijo Yeshua? I am the living water. Yo soy el agua viviente. Remember Yeshua says, I am the living water. Yo soy el agua viviente, que fue lo que dijo Yeshua. So now when Yeshua is being tempted by Satan. Ahora cuando Yeshua es tentado por Satanás. And he said, don't put God to the test. Y cuando él dice, no pongas a Dios a tu prueba, uh, a prueba. Because he is Emmanuel. Porque él es Emmanuel. And he is the living water. Y él es el agua viviente. So okay. you see how deep it goes. Ahora puedes ver qué tan profundo es esto. Betsy, did you have something? Uh, she was uh, asking if Massa and Meribah are uh, there in the land of Israel. Yeah, they're there. You can okay. go there. Son, son, son encontrados en Israel, en la tierra de Israel. Okay. Uh, 
Let's see, let's see, my, my, my good southern buddy, Mr. Will McCubbin. What do you think of this, this part there, Will? Hold on a second, Rabbi. Oh, Rainy, you could talk too. I didn't know if you were there. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. The, the correlation and connection here is amazing. Um, although I've read Exodus 17 so many times, and also the, um, the scripture in Matthew 4 and 7, um, and the, the stern translation does give you, you know, the you know, little quotes down at the bottom where you can, you know, cross-reference. I just never made that connection before. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing, especially where um, Moshe asked, uh, uh, the people asked, is Adonai with us or not? So that, that is just amazing. Amen. 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 All righty. Is Will there? Does he want to make a comment? He is, but he's uh, doing some planting right now, so he's kind of listening, trying to listen from a distance. Ah, he's missing the real deep roots. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, vamos a la próxima um, página aquí. Slide number 14. Uh, we're on Matthew chapter 4 now, it's estamos, verse 10. Estamos en Mateo uh, capítulo 4, versículo 10 ahora. Matthew chapter 4. Mateo, verse 10. Mateo 4, versículo 10. Just always hold your place in Matthew, Betsy, because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stay in the book of Matthew. We're going to go back and forth, but if you keep your place in Matthew. So I'm going to go, go sequentially. I'm going to go from the next chapter to the next chapter. Okay? Matthew 4, verse 10. Mateo 4, versículo 10. Away with you, Satan, Yeshua told him. For the Tanakh says, Worship Adonai your God and serve him only. Amen. Okay? But what, the, what is that really mean? ¿Qué significa? ¿Qué es el verdadero significado de esto? Because the church will, you know, they got their things that they're thinking that it means. Porque la iglesia tiene otro pensamiento sobre lo, lo que quiere decir esto, lo que significa now, esto. Now, it said, now the, in, the, in the Spanish, Ahora, en el español, does it say, for the Tanakh says, or? No. It doesn't say that. Because there. it says, because it is written. It is written. Okay. That's the phrase you need to look at. It ese, is written. Esa es la frase que tienes que ver aquí. Okay. Porque when it escrito says, está. it is written. Porque cuando dice, porque escrito está. It is meaning when in the Tanakh, the si, Old Testament. Significa el Viejo Testamento. So anytime you see that phrase in Espanol. Así que cuando mires esta frase en Espanol. Okay. Uh, for it is written. Cuando está escrito, porque escrito está. Then it means in the Old Testament. In el Viejo Testamento. Okay. Rabbi, can I make a comment sure. here? I mean, I, I don't understand how... Um, <laughs> I don't understand how the church can say that the law was abolished. If Yeshua, if the law was abolished, then how, how is it that he, can, that he can say these things to Satan? You know, and, and you know... Well, I, 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 I was blown away just by right now. Where I, I, you guys I have no of idea. I have, I, ha, I have no idea how they can say that the law is abolished. Because if the law is abolished, then how can we, when we get tested by Satan, say to him, you know, uh, do we say, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, get out, get away from me? You know, <coughs> is that what we're supposed to say to him now? No. You know? I mean, because obviously that's that's what the the impression that you know that I get from this church, and you speak in halabalaba language and 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 do some other weird things, you know. I mean, I, I just don't understand that, you know. And and in the letters, it plainly clears that the that the Torah is active still. Well, well this is why we're doing these types of studies. Okay, por eso so, es lo que estamos and haciendo and estos they're being estudios. downloaded a lot, also from our. If you if you ever don't if you ever want to download these powerpoints Si quieren uh, bajar estos um, estas páginas aquí electrónicas I'm an idiot. You, <laughs> no, I, I really am. Yo soy un idiota. Yo, lo, God's, word, God's soy. word is so precious to me. Porque la palabra de Dios es muy preciosa para mí. Even though I spent nine hours on this today. Eh, estuve haciendo estas páginas por nueve horas. I put these up there for free. Los pongo allí por uh, free. If you want Gratis, gratis. Thank you. Um, it, and if you want to donate, 
because somebody did a lot of work, then do. Y If si God quieres, leads you, then do. Y si quieres donar porque alguien ha hecho el trabajo de Dios, then por favor, uh, hazlo. But, you know, like Betsy, when you go home, you can always go to our website and click on Messianic Torah Time. Pero Betsy, cuando tú vayas a la casa, puedes ir a Messianic Torah Time. And you can time. download all y the puedes, PowerPoints. Y puedes bajar todas estas páginas aquí, por gratis. Uh, I mean, maybe we can even make it an e-book, I guess. Uh, have, uh, a lo mejor podemos hacer esto en un uh, libro electrónico. Um, but people are lost because they don't study. La gente está perdida porque no estudia. And when Yeshua came, cuando Yeshua vino, he made it personal again. Él lo hizo personalmente otra vez. We are all responsible for his personal Relationship. Todos somos responsables por esa relación personal. Betsy. Pero no andemos muy lejos porque el otro día yo estaba enseñándole que el Shabbat viene desde mucho tiempo. ¿A quién le estaba enseñando? A uno de la iglesia cristiana. She was showing somebody from the Christian church that Shabbat comes from. Yeah. ¿Viene de dónde? Yo le estaba diciendo a él que el domingo lo puso Constantino. Ellos no saben ni quién es Constantino. She was just telling them that, you know, Sunday was, was placed by Constantine and she says they don't even know who Constantine is. That, that also that comes into the other project that we're going to be working on here. Ese es otro proyecto que vamos a estudiar aquí, que vamos a hacer aquí. Uh, say more of it. I'm only going to say a little bit about it right now. Nomás voy a decir algo un poquito de esto. About the Benjamin project. De un proyecto llamado Benjamin, Benjamin. I want to get some more information into the Spanish community. Quiero uh, obtener más información sobre la comunidad hispana. About, you know, most of you have these stories in your family about, you know, candles on a Friday night or muchos a special de, meal. Mu muchos de ustedes tienen muchas historias sobre velas en, en el viernes por la noche o una uh, cena especial. And most of you have Jewish blood in you. Y muchos de ustedes tienen sangre judía. So our job is to get this information out. Así que nuestro trabajo es uh, que salga esta información. So we're going to be working on a track. Así que vamos a hacer como un libro. A flyer that like Clarabel gave out. Como, como, como un boletín. Mm -hmm. We're going to, it's going to be two, two parts. Y va a tener dos partes. One is going to be like that that flyer that we hand out. Primeramente va a ser como un boletín ese chiquito like, que tenemos. And I want to sit down with everybody on Shabbat. Y quiero sentarme con todos ustedes en el Shabbat. To brainstorm. Para to come up with ideas. Para obtener ideas. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if there was a brainstorm in Spanish. Um, and then also make a little booklet. Y hacer un libro también. Like a chick track or if there is a chick como, track that we can get. Como esos libritos llamado chick tracks. That we can start handing out in all this area. Que podemos dar eh, a la gente sobre toda esta área. Um, and on Saturday, y en el sábado, I want to have everybody together. Quiero tener a todos juntos. If you're interested in working on this project. Si están interesados en trabajar en este proyecto. Because what I'm finding from hearing from you guys. Porque lo que estoy hallando, hablando con ustedes is what Satan did to the Israelites long ago. Es lo que hizo Satanás con los israelitas hace muchos años. God atrás. said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Dios dijo que mi gente perece por falta de, falta de conocimiento. So we have to get them the knowledge. Así que nosotros tenemos que darles esa, eh, ese conocimiento. The reason I do these types of Bible studies. La razón por cual yo hago estos estudios bíblicos. And like the message we had on Shabbat. Y los mensajes como tuvimos en Shabbat. Is to give you ammunition. Es para darles uh, poder a ustedes. So let's say they don't want to hear about Shabbat. A ver, uh, si no, por ejemplo, si no quieren uh, saber nada del Shabbat. Or they don't know about Constantine. O no saben de Constantino. Well, then you can then say, well, Yeshua was talking here in Matthew 4. Entonces puedes responderles que Yeshua estaba hablando aquí en el capítulo 4. Then cuatro. you take them backwards. Y ahora lo puedes regresar al And Viejo Testamento. Hopefully once you start putting the pieces together. Y cuando pones los pedazos juntos. Then they can get to the Shabbat. Entonces ellos pueden llegar a la conclusión del día de reposo. But you want, 
One of the things is like Betsy's gigantic pocketbook there. Pero como podemos ver aquí eh, el, la bolsa de, de Betty, la, la cartera. You could keep pulling things out. Puedes sacar cosas. Okay. Uh, if this doesn't work. Si esto no trabaja. Uh, get this to work. Uh, Duncan Donuts. You, know, well, you just pull out different tools. Puedes uh, sacar diferentes herramientas. And I want to give you as much information y, as possible. Y te quiero dar mucha información, lo más posible. So the person didn't know about Constantine. Así que si la persona no sabe de Constantino. Well, they might know about this word. Quizá entonces van a saber de esta palabra. And it doesn't just work only for um, the Spanish people because y, we have a, a mixture of people. Y no solamente trabaja esto con la gente hispana porque tenemos un mixto de, de gente multitud you know, Jew, si estás hablando con un judío no Messiah, que no conoce a Mesías to, to aquí hay cosas que puedes usar you want to have an arsenal of weapons tienes, at your disposal. Tienes que tener como armas o herramientas para a tu disposición it's sort of like when you go to the dentist es uh, como ir al dentista and you see that tray <laughs> y miras esa donde tiene todas las herramientas y tiene como esos ganchos y todo eso que usa and you're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> y tú estás oh no yeah. so I want you to have all those tools así que quiero que tengan todas estas herramientas when witnessing Betsy cuando están and testificando Betsy. she says she says that uh, she uh, pena is uh, like uh, oh, I feel like no vergüenza, verdad? Pero oh, she says that she feels bad because she she feels sad because there are so many churches around her area because because she sees that there's like a whole bunch of partying and a lot of you know yelling and stuff like that. And I put the flyer in the car. I and don't care. and you put and you put, she puts the flyers in the car. Well, that's why I want to change the flyer. Uh, okay. Por eso es que quiere cambiar and, eso. You know, maybe the flyer should say, "Did you ever hear stories about Grandma doing this?" Y a lo mejor uh, cambiamos en el boletín. Uh, quizás has oído a tu abuelita hablar sobre esto. Or, you know, Uncle So and So doing this. O tío tal y tal está haciendo esto. Well, then you might be Jewish. Entonces, quizás a lo mejor tú serás judío. And then give our, our address. Y dar nuestra dirección e información. See, we don't want people to give up Yeshua. Porque nosotros no queremos que nadie deje a Yeshua. We want people to give up their pagan rituals. Queremos que dejen los rituales paganos. So we're going to try Amen. as many things as we can. That's why we're going to talk on Shabbat. Así que por eso vamos a intentar todo esto. Por eso es que vamos a hablar en el Shabbat. But if you're going to be involved in this, pero si vas a estar involucrado en esto, one of the biggest problems in the Spanish community, uno de los problemas más grandes en la comunidad hispana, is you don't follow through. Es que no siguen, no no siguen. We got to start and complete our task. Tenemos que empezar y completar este este proyecto. That's what we got to do. Eso es lo que tenemos que hacer. You know, Clarabel, I know you got a lot of good information. You're a very smart lady. Clarabel, tienes mucha buena información. Sí. Eres muy inteligente. Yes, I am, she said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the page that you gave her on Shabbat, uh, she read it well. And I, and I uh, remembered in her in her uh, when she was a young lady that 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 her mom didn't use the parents she would put uh, the the buckets the the buckets with cold water She would make uh, barley, uh, soup barleys, and meal soup barley. And okay, we'll talk all about this on Shabbat. Okay, hablaremos de todo esto sobre esto en Shabbat. I want you thinking about it for Shabbat. Pero quiero que pienses esto. Well, we can talk after class, so I want to come back to it. Podemos hablar sobre esto. Okay. So when you see the phrase, what, when the Tanakh says, or what does it say in Spanish? Así que cuando miran la frase, porque escrito está. Okay. That means it's talking about the Old Testament. Significa de esto del Viejo Testamento. So let's look at Matthew 4. 
Así que vamos a ver a Mateo 4, Verse 10 again. versículo 10 ahora. Away with you, Satan, Yeshua told him, for the Tanakh says, Worship Adonai your God and serve only him. Okay? So, what is Yeshua quoting from? Así que Yeshua, ¿qué está citando aquí? Let's go to slide number 15 and turn back to Deuteronomy 6. Ahora vamos a Deuteronomio 6 en la página... <laughs> página 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomio 6. We're going to look at verse 13 through 15 now. Versículo 13 al 15. Yep. Okay. Verse 13 through 15 says, You are to fear Adonai your God, serve him, and swear by his name. You are not to follow other gods chosen from the gods of the peoples around you, because Adonai your God who is here with you is a jealous God. If you do, anger of Adonai your God will flare up against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the earth. So here in verse 13, Así que en el versículo 13 aquí, the This is what Yeshua is quoting. Esto es lo que Yeshua está citando aquí. You are to fear Adonai your God. Serve him. A Jehová tu Dios temerás y a él solo servirás. So, serve. What was the word for serve? Así que servir, eh, que es la palabra para servir. In Hebrew is avodah. En hebreo es avodah. Work and worship. Serving God. Es trabajar o servir. And then Yeshua is saying, don't. Don't serve them other guys. No sirvas a, a, a otros dioses. <coughs> But now also turn to Deuteronomy 10. Pero ahora vamos a Deuteronomio 10. We're going to look at verse 19 through 22. Del versículo 19 al 22. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19 through 22. Deuteronomio 10, del 19 al 22. Therefore you are to love the foreigner, since you are foreigners in the land of Egypt. You are to fear Adonai, your God, serve him. Cling to him, swear by his name, he is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things, which you have seen with your own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt with only 70 people, but now Adonai your God has made you, made your number as many as the stars of the sky. So here Yeshua is quoting also from verse 20. Uh, podemos ver que Yeshua está citando aquí el versículo 20. Serve Adonai. A Jehová, tu Dios temerás, y a don't él solo follow, servirás. Don't follow the pagan gods like in Egypt. No sigan los dioses paganos como en Egipto. So this is what he was saying to Satan. Así que esto es lo que le, él estaba diciendo a Satanás. I'm not following you, you're a pagan god. Tú, yo no te voy a seguir a ti, tú eres un Dios pagano. Mario? Ahora, continuando con la página 16. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. Now. Vamos a Mateo 8, versículo 13 al 17. Matthew chapter 8. Mateo 8. We're going to look at verse 13 through 17. Versículo 13 al 17. <coughs> Matthew 8, Mateo 8, verse 13 through 17, versículo 13 al 17, Matthew 8, verse 13 through 17, and mm -hmm. Yeshua said to the officer, go, let it be for you as you have trusted, and his orderly was healed at that very moment. Yeshua went to Kephas home, and there saw Kephas' mother-in-law sick in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began helping him. When evening came, many people held the power of de many held in the power of demons were brought to him. He expelled the spirits with a word and healed all who were ill. This was done to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Yeshiahu, that's Isaiah. He himself took our weaknesses and bore our diseases. Amen. So, in verse 14. En el versículo 14. You see that Yeshua helped Kepha's mother-in-law. Podemos ver que Yeshua uh, ayudó a la cuñada well, what does de, it say? de Pedro. What does it say in Spanish? A la suegra. A la suegra, no cuñada. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always get those terms mixed up. Okay, la suegra now, de Pedro. <laughs> now, 
if you're ever witnessing to a Catholic, Ahora, si estás testificando a un católico, they say Peter was the first pope. Ellos dicen que Pedro es el primer papa. The popes are not married. El papa no es casado. But here, Yeshua healed Kepha's mother-in-law. Pero aquí podemos ver que Yeshua sanó a la suegra de Pedro. So if he healed his mother-in-law, that means Kepha's married. Así que si él sanó a la suegra de Pedro, eso significa que Pedro era un hombre casado. Okay, so you can show them there's an error going on here. Ahora puedes ver que hay un error aquí. Now look at verse 17. Ahora vamos al versículo 17. This was done to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Yeshiahu. He himself took our weaknesses and bore our diseases. Now, it's telling you it's something in Isaiah. Ahora te está diciendo aquí que está escrito en Isaías. So let's turn to slide number 17. Ahora vamos a la página 17. And turn to Yeshiahu, Isaiah 53. Y vamos a Isaías 53. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 4. Versículo 1 al 4. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 4. Versículo 1 al 4. Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 4. Isaiah 53, versículo 1 al 4. Who believed our report? To whom is the arm of Adonai revealed? For before him he grew up like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He was not well formed or especially handsome. We saw him, but his appearance did not attract us. People despised and avoided him, a man of pains, well acquainted with illness, like someone from whom people turned their faces. He was despised. We did not value him. In fact, it was our diseases he, he bore, our pains from which he suffered. Yet we regarded him as punished, stricken, and afflicted by God. So here he just tells a little girl, Talitha Kumai, little girl, get up. Y aquí le, podemos ver que Yeshua dice, niña, levántate. He says to Kepha's mother-in-law, he just gets her up. Le dice a la suegra de Pedro, levántate, y se levantó. So here it is, he's bearing our diseases. Y aquí podemos ver que él es, uh, tiene nuestras enfermedades. Okay, but you know, we, the people wanted to get rid of him, the leadership anyway. Pero, say it again, I'm sorry. The leadership wanted to get rid of Yeshua. Pero, pero el liderazgo se quería deshacer de Yeshua. And he was punished for us. Y él fue castigado por nosotros. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Continuando con la próxima Matthew página. Matthew chapter 10. Mateo capítulo 10. Matthew chapter 10. Mateo capítulo 10. We're going to look at verse 32 through 40. Versículo uh, 32 al 40. Matthew, 30, Matthew 10, verse 32. Mateo 10, versículo 32. Through verse 40. Al 40. Matthew 10, 32. Mateo 10, 32. Uh, al 40. And through 40. Whoever acknowledges me in the presence of other, I will also acknowledge in the presence of my Father in heaven. This is why you say the same prayer. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Don't suppose that I have come to bring peace to the land. It is not peace that I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, so that a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Whoever loves his father and mother more than he loves me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than he loves me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his execution stake or the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his own life will lose it, but the person who loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you is receiving me, and whoever receives me is receiving the one who sent me. Amen. Let's look back at verse 32. Vamos a ver el versículo 32. Whoever acknowledges me in the presence of others, I will also acknowledge in the presence of my Father in heaven. Amen. There's a teaching that's going on out there. Hay una enseñanza que um, he oído. That you don't have to say the sinner's prayer. Que no tienes que decir la oración del pecador. No, there, there's no formulated sinner's prayer. No hay fórmula para... Uh, uh, 
el, la, la oración del pecador. But it has to be a prayer of teshuva, repentance pero, and returning. Pero, pero tiene que ser una oración de arrepentimiento y de regreso. But it has to also be a prayer acknowledging Yeshua as Messiah. Pero también tiene, tenemos que reconocer que Yeshua es el Mesías. Because if you look at verse 32. Porque si miras al versículo 32. If you don't acknowledge Yeshua here. Si no reconoces a Yeshua aquí. Yeshua is not going to acknowledge you before his father. Yeshua no te va a reconocer en frente de su padre. So it is very important when you hear it, you don't have to say the sinner's prayer. Así que es muy importante cuando uh, que no tengas que decir la oración del pecador. To know, to know Matthew 10:32. Para conocer el, uh, esta escritura 32 aquí en, encontrada en Mateo. Now verse 35 and 36. Ahora el versículo. Here. Ahora el versículo 35 al 36. 36. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, so that a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. So this is pretty intense. Así que esto es algo muy intenso aquí. But is this a prophecy? Pero acaso esta es una profecía? And is this, if this is a prophecy, y acaso, si esto es profecía, is there more to this? Eh, acaso hay más pa, eh, sobre esto? Of what Yeshua would be saying. De lo que Yeshua está diciendo aquí. Move this slide number 19 and turn to the book of Micah. Ahora vamos al libro de Micah. Sefer Micah. What? Sefer Micah. Micah 7. Micaías. 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 Micaías, uh, what is chapter it? 7. Capítulo 7. Micah chapter 7. Reina Except Valera. for Micah. Reina Valera is so big. <laughs> <laughs> right, right near the end. Right near the end of the Tanakh. It's like by Obadiah. Micaeus, okay. Micah 7, verse 1 through 7. Micaeus, uh, Micaeus. <laughs> Siete. It's going to be right near the end, Betsy, by Obadiah and the minor prophets. Mique or go look in the table of context. Miqueas 7, versículo 1 al 7. All righty. 7, verse 1 through 7. Woe to me, for I have become like the leavenings of summer fruits, like the gleanings when the vintage is finished. There is a cluster worthy eating no early ripened fig that appeals to me. The godly have been destroyed from the land. There's no upright among man. They all lie and wait for blood. Each hurts, each hunts his brother with a net. Their hands do evil well. The prince makes his request, the judge grants it for a price the great man expresses his evil desires, thus they will weave it together. The best of them is a briar, the most upright worse than thorn hedge. The time of your watchman of your punishment has come now. They will be confused. Don't trust in your neighbor. Don't put confidence in a close friend. Shut the gates of your mouth, even from your wife lying there in the bedroom mm -hmm. with you in bed. For son insults his father, a daughter rises against her mother, hmm. daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A person's enemies are the members of his own household. Hmm. But as for me, I will look to Adonai. I will wait for God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Amen. All right. Now, remember Yeshua says, go be fishers of men. Ahora, acuérdense que Yeshua dis, uh, dijo, sean pescadores de hombres. He's saying the opposite of what's being said here in Micah. Él está diciendo lo opuesto de lo que dice aquí en Micah. Because, Micah, look at verse uh, 2 again. Porque miren a uh, Micah, versículo 2. The godly have been destroyed from the land. There is no upright among man. They will lie and wait for blood. Each hunts his brother with a net. Hmm. So Yeshua is saying, go make fishers. Of, you become fishers of men. Así que Yeshua dice, sean pescadores de los hombres. With a positive message. Con un uh, mensaje positivo. Now going back to the Matthew 10 scripture here. Ahora regresando a well, la, turn, keep your page. Regresando a la Mateo 10, tre, uh, 35 when, y 36. When Yeshua was saying, 
You're going to have enemies in your own home. Cuando Yeshua dice que vas a tener enemigos en tu propio hogar. He's quoting this Micah scripture. Él está citando esta escritura en Micah. And right here, there's nobody upright. Y aquí podemos ver que no hay nadie recto. We're coming to that period in time, people. Estamos llegando a ese punto en el tiempo. Where you're not going to be able to trust people in your own home. Hasta no vas a poder confiar en gente en tu propio hogar. That's why if you have to start cutting people off, start cutting people off. Así que si tienes que cortar a gente, córtalos. Because you'll put all the believers in jeopardy. Porque vas a poner a todo creyente en gran peligro. Like, you know, remember the story I told you about the North Koreans. Acuérdate de lo que te dije de los uh, coreanos, de los South Koreans. Uh, the North Koreans. North Koreans. Um, los coreanos del norte. Where the names of the people of the church were in a Bible. Donde los nombres de ciertos miembros uh, que se congregaban estaban escritos en una Biblia. And somebody found the Bible. Y alguien halló la Biblia en el gobierno. And they rounded up all those people that were in that on that list. Y consiguieron a todas esas gentes que estaban en esa lista. And they laid them down in the street. That los pusieron them. en la, en una calle. With a bulldozer. Y una, um, no, uh, un, uh, one, yeah, one of those big wheels. Steam, uh, steam roller. Steam roller uh, como un tractor. And they said, renounce Jesus or get run over. Les dijeron que renunciaran el nombre de Yeshua a Yeshua o los iban a matar. Nobody renounced Messiah. Nadie renunció, uh, rechazó al Mesías. But you see... The scriptures coming alive in our day. Pero podemos ver que las escrituras se, se están uh, manifestando. Look at verse. En look ojos. at verse five and six. Ahora vamos a ver el versículo cinco y seis. Don't trust in your neighbor. Don't put confidence in a close friend. Shut the gates of your mouth, even from your wife lying there with you in bed. For a son insults his father, a daughter rises against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A person's enemies are the members of his own household. Yeshua said that this would happen. Yeshua dijo que esto iba a pasar. And it happened 2,000 years ago and it's going to happen again. Pasó 2,000 años atrás y va a pasar esto otra vez. Now in verse 7 Ahora el versículo 7 You see the word salvation. Puedes ver la palabra salvación. But as for me I will look to Adonai I will wait for the God of my salvation my God will hear me. That is not Yeshua's name. Ese no es el nombre de Yeshua. It is the word Yesha. Es, el pal es la palabra Yesha. Which means deliverance. Que significa, um, yeah, uh, liberación. Is it? Deliverance. deliverance. Uh -huh. Liberación. Uh -huh. Salvation. Salvación. Rescue. Rescate. 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 Safety. <laughs> um, seguridad. Uh, welfare. Uh, bienestar. Victory. Victoria. It's not it in Yeshua's name here. No es uh, el nombre de Yeshua aquí. Okay, so there you have a whole, you have a whole different look at what Yeshua is now talking about. Así que ahora podemos ver uh, otro otro pistazo de lo que estaba hablando Yeshua. <coughs> Next slide, moving on to slide number 20, back to Matthew 10. Uh, continuando en la página 20, uh, regresando a Mateo 10. We're going to look at verse 32 through 40 now. Ahora vamos a ver el versículo 32 al 40 ahora. Oh, sorry, I doubled it up. Turn to Matthew 11. Uh, perdón, vamos al uh, Mateo 11. We're on slide number 22. Estamos en la página 22 ahora. Sli uh, Matthew 11, verse 4 through 11. Mateo 11, verse de 4 through 11. versículo 4 al 11. Yeshua answered, Go and tell Yochanan what you are hearing and seeing. The blind are seeing again, the lame are walking. People with tisarat, leprosy, are being cleansed. The deaf are hearing, the dead are being raised. The good news is being told to the poor. And how blessed is anyone not offended by me? As they were leaving, Yeshua began speaking about Yochanan to the crowds. Did you go out to the desert to see, reeds swaying in the breeze? No. Then what did you go out to see? Someone who was well-dressed? Well-dressed people live in king's palaces. No. So why did you go out? To see the prophet. Yes. And I tell you, and I tell you, he's much more than a prophet. This is the one whom the Tanakh says, see, I'm sending out my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. 
Yes, I tell you that among born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than Yochanan, the immerser. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. Amen. All right, focus. Let's read verse 10. Vamos a ver um, el uh, yeah. versículo 10. This is the one whom the Tanakh says, See, I'm sending out my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Okay? So let's get the context of what was going on with Yochanan. Right? Ahora vamos a ver el contexto en cual uh, hablaba sobre Juan. Turn to uh, slide number 23. Vamos a la página 23. And turn back to Malachi chapter 3. Y ahora vamos al libro de Malaquías uh, capítulo 3 uh -huh. versículo 1 al 6. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 through 6. Malaquías. Last, uh, last one before the New Testament. That's mm -hmm. Malaquías Malachi. 3. Versículo 1 al 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. It says, Look, I am sending my messenger to clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant in whom you take such delight. Look, here he comes, says Adonai Sivaot. But who can endure the day when he comes? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like refiner's fire, like soap makers lie. He will sit testing and purifying the silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, refining mm. them like gold and silver, so that they can bring offerings to Adonai uprightly. Then the offering of Yehuda and Yerushalayim will be pleasing to Adonai as it was in the days of old, as in the years gone by. Then I will approach you for judgment, and I will be quick to witness against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who take advantage of wage earners, widows and orphans, against those who rob the foreigner of his rights and don't fear me, says Adonai Sivaot, but because I, Adonai, do not change. You sons of Yaakov will not be destroyed. So here in verse 6. Aquí en el versículo 6. Anybody who believes in um, replacement theology. Todos aquellos que uh, creen en esa teología del reemplazo. Then you can just read them this line. Entonces puedes leerles esta línea. Now we look at verse 1. Ahora podemos ver el versículo 1. Look, I'm sending my messenger to clear the way before me and the Lord who you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant in whom you take such delight. Look, here he comes. Says Adonai Siva. Oh, and then you see what else is going on. Y podemos ver lo que está pasando aquí. That Yochanan was trying to call us back to the Lord's ways. Que Juan nos estaba llamando a las maneras de Dios. Okay, next slide. Próxima uh, página. Slide number 24. Página uh, 24. Okay, well, you're going to miss something good there, Ranch. Mm. Okay. All right, Matthew 12. Mateo 12. Verse 10 through 21. Versículo 10 al 21. Matthew uh, 12, verse 10 through 21. Mateo 12, del 10 al 21. Uh, I gave you the link, and tomorrow I'll have the audio on it. Uh, a man there had a shriveled hand looking for a reason to accuse him of something they asked him. Is healing permitted on Shabbat? But he answered, If you have a sheep that falls into a pit on Shabbat, which of you won't take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, what is permitted on Shabbat is to do good. Amen. Then the man, he said, Hold out your hand. And he held it out and became restored. As sound as the other one. But the Purushim went out and began plotting how they might do away with Yeshua. Aware of this, he left that area. Many people followed him, and he healed them all. But he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Yeshiahu, the prophet. Here is my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I put my spirit on him. 
and he will announce justice to the Gentiles. He will not fight or shout. No one will hear his voice in the streets. He will not snap off a broken reed or snuff out a smoldering lick until he has brought justice through to victory. In him, the Gentiles will put their hope. Look at verse 18 again. Vamos a ver el versículo 18 otra vez. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, and with whom I am well pleased. I put my spirit on him, and he will announce justice to the Gentiles. Okay, when Yeshua came up out of the water, what Cuando came upon him? Cuando Yeshua salió del agua, ¿qué fue lo que estaba sobre él? The dove came upon him. El, la, el, la paloma. <laughs> Okay. Iba a decir la codorniz, no, well, what does la the dove or the paloma represent? ¿Qué es lo que significa esa paloma? The covenant. El pacto. Because it was the dove that came back and brought the leaf, the olive leaf to Noah. Porque fue la paloma que salió y le trajo esa planta, esa uh, hoja de oliva a so Noé. The raven only came back when he didn't have anywhere to put his feet. El otro um, animal salió, pero no tenía donde poner sus pies. But the dove came back. Pero la paloma regresó. So it reminds us of the spirit. Así que nos uh, recuerda del espíritu. So here it is, verse 18. Así que tenemos aquí el versículo 18. The spirit came down on the Lord. El espíritu cayó sobre el Señor, sobre Yeshua. And where was Yeshua from? ¿Y de dónde era Yeshua? The valley of the Goyim. El valle de uh, los uh, de las naciones. Okay. So let's now look where it says Yeshayahu the prophet. Ahora vamos a ver donde dice Yeshayahu el profeta. Like in verse Isaías, 17 it says that. En el versículo 17. Isaiah 42. Mario's guy. Ooh, he's got some game. Mario. Oh, I'm in the book right now. Isaiah 42, please. Isaías 42, por favor. Isaiah 42, verse Isaías, 1 through 7. Isaías 42. 42, verse 1 through 7. Isaías 42, del 1 al 7. No, there's a whole bunch. Isaiah 42, verse 1 through 7. Del uno al siete, por favor. Here is my servant whom I support, my chosen one, in whom I take pleasure. I have put my spirit on him. He will bring justice to the Goyim. He will not cry or shout, nor will hear his voice in the streets. He will not snap off a broken reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. He will bring forth justice according to the truth. He will not weaken or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth. And the coastlands wait for his Torah. Thus says God, Adonai, who created the heavens and spread them out, who stretched out the earth all and all that grows from it, who gives breath to the people on it and the spirit to those who walk in it. I, Adonai, called you righteously, and I took hold of you by the hand. I shaped you and made you a covenant for the people to be a light for the goyim, so that you can open blind eyes, free prisoners from confinement, those living in darkness from the dungeon. So here... This is what was being talked about in Matthew. Así que lo que está escrito aquí fue lo que fue dicho en Mateo 10. He will bring justice to the Goyim. Que él traerá justicia a las naciones. But did you see what he's bringing to the Goyim? Pero, puede, pero estás viendo lo que él está trayendo a, los, a las naciones. Look at verse 4. Miren el versículo 4. He will not weaken or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his Torah. Amen. So when the, when your churchy friend says we don't need Torah anymore. Así que cuando tus amigos de acá de la iglesia te digan ya no necesitamos el Torah. Um, you let them look on over here. Los diriges a aquí. <laughs> Los diriges aquí al versículo 4. He's not bringing a ham sandwich. Él no va a traer un sándwich de jamón. Okay, moving on to slide number 26. Ahora el vers, um, página 26. We're moving on to Matthew 13. Woo Vamos a Mateo 13. We might get through this tonight. Hey. I doubt it. <laughs> Mateo 13. Matthew 13, verse 26 to 35. Versículo 26 al 35. Matthew 13. Mateo 13. Verse 26 to 35. Uh, versículo 26 al 35. 
When the wheat sprouted and formed heads of grain, the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, The enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them up? But he said, No, because if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot some of the wheat at the same time. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I would tell the reapers to collect the weeds first and tie them in bundles to be burned, but to gather the weeds into my barn. Yeshua put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man takes and sows in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it grows up, it is larger than any garden plant and becomes a tree, so that the birds flying about come and nest in its branches. And he told them yet another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed a bushel, a bushel of flour then waited until the whole batch of dough rose. All these things Yeshua said to the crowd in parables. He said nothing to them without using a parable. Those who fulfill, this was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. It was, I will open my mouth in parables. I will say what has been hidden since the creation of the universe. Okay. Now, we first go to um, verse 30. Again. Vamos al versículo 30, otra vez. Um, let them both grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers to collect the weeds first and tie them in bundles to be burned, <coughs> but to gather the weeds in my barn. So, if you have fr some friends that think they're going to be raptured first, Así que si tienes amigos que, va, que dicen que van a ser raptados primero, you might want them to read uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. A lo mejor quiere, los diriges aquí a Mateo 13, versículo 30. What happens to the first ones that get, get to go first? ¿Qué pasa a las primeras que son recogidos primero? It's going to be pretty hot in that fire. Va a ser muy caliente en ese fuego. Now we focus on verse 35. Ahora nos enfocamos en el versículo 35. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will say what has been hidden since the creation of the universe. Okay. So it says, what does it say there in here? It's spoken through the prophet. Does it say? Uh, it says, I will open my mouth in parables. I will declare uh, things that are hidden from the foundation of the world, mundo. It doesn't say prophet or anything? Uh, where? I'm sorry. In verse 35, it says this was oh. fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet. Yes, it, it says a uh, prophet. It says profeta. El profeta. Okay. Let's go to slide number 27. Let's see the fulfillment of that. Vamos a la página 27, la escritura. Psalm 78. Salmo 78. Psalm 78, verse 1 through 8. Salmo 78, um, versículo 1 al 8. Psalm 78, Psalm enchanted evening. <laughs> Salmo 78, huh? versículo 1 al 8. Hmm? Uh, yeah, but there's, there's a couple places, many of the things. Psalm 78, verse 1 through 8. Salmo 78, del 1 al 8. Okay, it says... No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> She's trying to help you. <laughs> okay. Listen, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ears to the words of my from my mouth. I will speak to you in parables and explain mysteries of days of old. The things which you which have heard and known and which our fathers told us. We will not hide from their descendants. We will tell the generations to come the praises of Adonai and his strength, the wonders that he has performed. He raised up a testimony in Yaakov and established a Torah in Israel. He commanded our ancestors to make this known to their children so that the next generation would know it the children not yet born who would themselves arise and tell their own children. Who could then put their confidence in God, not forgetting God's deeds, but obeying his mitzvot? Then they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn, rebellious generation, a generation with up unprepared hearts, with spirits unfaithful to God. So when Yeshua is talking in parables, he's talking about these people that are unfaithful. 
Así que cuando Yeshua está hablando esta parábola, está hablando sobre esta gente que fue infiel. He's talking about a stubborn, rebellious generation. Él está hablando de una generación rebelde con Tomás. But if you look at verse 7, pero si pueden ver el versículo 7, who could put, then put their confidence in God, not forgetting God's deeds, but obeying his mitzvot. Amen. So if you were to play his mitz, uh, obey his mitzvot, si, his commandments, así que si vas a guardar sus mandamientos, then you're going to understand the parables. Entonces tú vas a entender esas parábolas o esos dichos de Yeshua. But if you're a cabeza de papa, pero si eres una cabeza de papa, then you're not going to understand these things. Entonces no vas a entender eso. <coughs> okay, you're not going to pay attention to the word of God. No vas a poder uh, poner atención a la palabra de Dios. All right, all right, going on to the next slide. Matthew 15, slide 28. Uh, página 28. Mateo, Mateo 15, versículo 1 al 9. Matthew 15, verse 1 through 9. Mateo 15, del 1 al 9. Matthew 15, verse 1 through 9. Come on, break me faster. Okay, it says... Let's see, Mario, did you get the page yet? Oh, Brittany beat you. She got the page before you were done. Okay. Then some Pirishim and Torah teachers from the Yerushalayim came to Yeshua and asked him, What is it that your Talmudim break the tradition of the elders? They don't do nitalat yadalayim before they eat. He answered, Indeed, they break the commandment of God by your traditions. But God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father and mother must be put to death. But you say, if anyone says to his father or mother, I have promised to give to God what I might have help, uh, have used to help you. Then he ri ri is rid of his duty to honor his father and mother. Thus, by your traditions, you make null and void the word of God. You hypocrites. Yes, Yahoo was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is useless because they teach man-made rules as if they were doctrines. So here, verse 7 through 9, uh, versículo 7 al 9, um, you see that once again it says, Yeshiyahu. Otra vez podemos ver sobre el profeta Isaías. Okay, so let's go read what it says in Yeshiyahu so you can understand what Yeshua was talking Vamos about. Vamos a ver lo que está escrito en Isaías para poder entender a Yeshua. Slide number 29. Página 29. But first we're going to go to Exodus 20. Pero primero vamos a ir a Éxodo 20. Before we go to the prophet. Antes de continuar con el profeta. Exodus 20. Éxodo 20, por favor. We're going to look at verse 2 through 12. Vamos a ver los versículos 2 al 12. We're going to look at the first six commandments. Vamos a ver a los primeros seis mandamientos. Because, see, so you have to go through the first five to get to number six. Porque tienes que repasar. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> tienes que... We're going to look at five commandments. No, two, four, five. Yeah, we're gonna look at five. You gotta get through four to get to five. Vamos a ver a los cinco mandamientos. Fifteen commandments. Fifteen commandments. Ten commandments. Los primeros cinco mandamientos. Éxodo 20, versículo 2 al 12, por favor. It says, I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the abode of slavery. You are to have no other gods before me. You are to not, you are not to make For yourself a carved image or any kind of representation of anything in heaven above on the earth beneath or in the water below the shoreline you are not to bow down to them or serve them for I am your, your God am a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but displaying grace to the thousand generation of those who love me and obey my mitzvot You are not to use lightly the name of Adonai your God because Adonai will not leave unpunished someone who uses his name lightly. But remember the day, Shabbat, to set it apart for God. For six days to do labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day, Shabbat, for Adonai your God. On it, you are not to do any kind of work. Not you, your son, your daughter, not your male or female slave, not your livestock, and not the goyim staying with you inside your gates to your property. On six days, Adonai made heaven and earth, sea and everything in them. And on the seventh day, he rested. This is why Adonai blessed the day, Shabbat. 
mm-hmm. on Sunday, mm-hmm. and separated it for himself. Honor your father and mother so you may live long in the land which I know your God is giving you. So here, when Yeshua is talking about honoring your mother and father, Así que cuando Yeshua está hablando, honra a tu padre y a tu madre. Well, if you read it, if you understand it in context, pues si lo entiendes en contexto, so if, you know, you know, Yeshua is saying, you know, these people honor me with their lips. Yeshua está diciendo aquí que ellos me honran con sus labios. But they're not even honoring their mother and father. Pero no honran a su madre y a su padre. So, uh, you have to get through the Sabbath to honor your father and mother. Así que tienes que repasar eh, sobre el Shabbat para poder eh, llegar a uh, las escrituras de tu madre y tu padre. But now you understand the context. Pero ahora, of what ahora, he's saying. ahora entiendes el contexto en uh, cual él está hablando. All right. Um, let's move on a little bit more. Vamos a Slide continuar number 30. un poco. Eh, página 30. Turn to Matthew 18. Vamos a Mateo 18. Matthew 18, verse 14 through 17. Mateo 18, versículos 14 al 17. Matthew 18. Mateo 18. Verse 14 through 17. Versículo 14 al 17. You're just holding a place, Brittany. I know you. Matthew 18. Huh? Well, I mean, we're going back and forth between, you know, it's going to be in that general area. She also has tabs. Okay. Matthew 18, verse 14 through 17. Mateo, Mateo 18, uh, versículo 14 al 17. Thus your Father in heaven does not want even one of these little ones to be lost. Moreover, if your brother commits a sin against you, go and show him his fault. But privately, just between the two of you, if he listens to you, you have one back your brother. If he doesn't listen, take one or two others with you so that every accusation can be supported by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to hear them, tell the congregation, or if he refuses to listen even to the congregation, treat him as if you were a pagan or a tax collector. Okay, this is also for everybody listening to understand. Esto es uh, para todos ustedes que están escuchando y para que entiendan. If you have a problem with somebody, si tú tienes un problema con alguien, in the congregation, en la congregación, you first take them aside privately. Primero los tomas y los llevas privadamente. And you try you try to present your argument with them. Y presentas eh, tu discurso con ellos. If that person does not want to see your point of view, si esa persona no quiere ver tu punto de vista, then you take one or two brothers or sisters with you. Entonces tomas a dos o tres hermanos contigo. But you don't skip over the first process. Pero no no brincas ese primer proceso. And you don't bring it in front of everybody before that person. Y no lo traes en frente de todos. Uh, has been given the opportunity to discuss things with you. Uh, hasta que tengan esa, ese discurso privadamente. Because you may be wrong also. Porque a lo mejor tú estás en lo mal también. And then you'll look like a fool. Entonces eh, tú puedes verte como el, you know, <laughs> como el malo. Okay, el now mal. look at verse 16. Ahora vamos a ver el versículo 16. If he doesn't listen, take one or two of the others with you so that every accusation can be supported by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So, okay. 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 Um, so, what is Yeshua quoting from? Así que, ¿qué está citando aquí Yeshua? Turn to Deuteronomy 17. Vamos a Deuteronomio 17. Who got busted, Brit? You got busted, Brittany? Okay, man, Deuteronomy 17. Ciao, Bella. Okay. Adieu. Oh, Tristan beat you on the number there. It was me. Oh, Jen <laughs> beat you on the number. There was a baby in my arm. Oh, she beat you, Brittany. And no tabs. And no tabs. Deuteronomy 17, del 1 al 7. Deuteronomy 17, verse 1 through 7. You are not to sacrifice to our night God a cow, sheep, is a defect or anything wrong with it, that would be an abomination to Adonai your God. 
If there is found among you within your, any of your gates that Adonai your God gives you a man or a woman who does what Adonai your God sees as wicked, transgressing his covenant, by going and serving other gods and worshiping them, the sun, the moon, or anything in the sky, something I have forbidden. And it is told to you, or you hear about it, then you are to investigate the matter diligently. If it is true, if it is confirmed that such successful things are being done in Israel, then you are to bring the man or woman who has done this wicked thing to your city gates and stone that man or woman to death. The death sentence is to be carried out only if there was testimony from two or three witnesses. He may not be sentenced to death on the testimony of only one witness. The witnesses are to be the first to stone him to death afterwards. All the people who are to stone him, thus you will put an end to the wickedness among you. So when Yeshua was saying uh, two or three witnesses, he was talking about killing somebody. Así que cuando Yeshua estaba hablando sobre dos o tres testigos, él estaba hablando sobre matar a alguien. That was something pretty serious what's es, going on. There. Eso era algo muy serio lo que él estaba hablando aquí. So when he's talking about this in Matthew 18, Así que cuando él está hablando esto de Mateo 18, he's quoting that somebody would be stoned to death. Él está citando aquí que alguien iba a ser apedreado. All right, moving on to slide number 32. Ahora, continuando con eh, la página 32 ahora. This is also tying together with what we just read. Esto está interlazando también con lo que estamos hablando aquí, Deuteronomio 19, del versículo 15 al 19. Deuteronomy 19, verse 15 through 19. Deuteronomy 19, verse 15 through 19. Deuteronomio 19, del versículo 15 al 19. One witness alone will not be sufficient to convict a person of any offense or sin of any kind. No ma the matter will be established only if there are two or three witnesses testifying against, it, against him. If a, miraculous, a malicious witness comes forward and gives false testimony against someone, then both of the men involved in the controversy are to stand before Adonai, before the Kohanim and the judges in the office at that time. The judges are to investigate carefully. If they find that the witnesses is lying and has given false testimony against his brother, you are to do to him what he intended to do to his brother. If it, in this way, you will put an end to such wickedness among you. Mm. So when yeah. Yeshua said what he said in the Matthew scripture, Así que si podemos ver lo que Yeshua estaba hablando aquí en, he, He's talking about stoning people. Él está hablando sobre apedrear a alguien. But if he's finding that you're lying, Pero also, si él está hallando que estás mintiendo, and you wanted to uh, kill someone, y tú, have them stoned, y tú querías que alguien fuera apedrado, then if it's found out that you're lying, you're the one that's going to get stoned. Y si es encontrado que tú eras el que estaba mintiendo, entonces tú vas a ser apedrado. All right, moving on to slide 33. Uh, continuando con la página 33. Matthew 19. Mateo. 19. We're going to look at verse 1 through 6. Versículo 1 al 6. Matthew 19. Mateo 19. This is a scripture for those who say homosexuality in the Christian church is okay. Eso es para aquellos que dicen que la homosexualidad en la iglesia cristiana es okay. Es, está bien. Okay, Matthew 19. Mateo 19. Let's see what Yeshua says about homosexuality. Vamos a ver lo que dice Yeshua sobre este tema. Verse 1 through 6. Versículo 1 al 6. When Yeshua had finished talking about these things, he left the Galal and traveled down east side of the Ardan River until he passed the border of Yehuda. Great crowds followed him and healed, and he healed them there. Some Purishim came and tried to trap him by asking, is it permitted for a man to divorce his wife on any ground, whatever? He replied, haven't you read that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female? And that he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Thus they are no longer two but one. So then no one should split apart what God has joined together. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 5. Vamos a ver el versículo 5 otra vez. And that he said, for this reason a man 
should leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. So you see, Así que podemos ver. Jovi needs a diaper change. <laughs> uh, a man shall leave his father and mother Un hombre va a dejar a su madre y a su padre and be united with a husband y estará unido con un esposo no, no. Be with his wife. él va a estar unido con su esposa so when these episcopalians are saying that it's okay to be gay and love G and you know, be a christian eh, así que cuando los uh, Epis episcopalians how do you, how do you say it in spanish episcopas or the no no the episcopalians bueno uh, The Episcopalians, cuando los uh, Episcopalians dicen, digan que está bien ser gay en la... En la Episcopado. Eh, okay. Okay. Episcopal. Episcopal. Okay. Episcopal. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what is Yeshua quoting from? Así que, ¿qué es lo que está citando Yeshua? Get ready, Tris. <laughs> I can't hear everything at once. Genesis chapter 2, we're going on the next slide. Genesis capítulo 2. Rabbi, is uh, the Episcopalians, are they part of the Anglican church? Yes. Like, are they? Okay. Yeah. So part that's, okay. So you know, that's, like the that's, of England. that's the king, the queen of England, I should yeah. say. You know, the church of England has the gay bishop who left his wife, so he's an adulterer mm. and a homosexual. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And the queen, the queen has no say over? Well, she's not. Homosexual. Well, I mean, I know <laughs> that, but, <laughs> but she is the one that's the head over that. Uh, yeah, but that she's church. not exerting her power with that just yet. Okay, she's wow. She's putting other puzzle pieces together. Mm. She's got bigger fish to fry. Mm. <laughs> And the Lord's going to fry that. All right, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 24. Uh, Genesis capítulo 2, uh, what is it? Versículo 21 al 24. Then God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he was sleeping he took one of his ribs and closed up the place where he took it with the flesh the rib which Adonai God had taken from the man he made a woman and he brought her to the man the man said at last <laughs> this is bone for my bones and flesh for my flesh she will be called Isha woman because she has taken out a man this is why man is to leave his father and mother and stick with his wife and they are to become one flesh so this is what Yeshua is quoting esto es lo que está citando Yeshua aquí God didn't make Adam and Steve, he made Adam and Eve. Dios no hizo a Adán y Esteban, hizo a Adán y Eva. <laughs> okay. And I like having too much woman to get your hormones out of All right, forget it. Next slide. Ahora, slide el pro 35. Próxima página, 35. Uh, I doubled up again, sorry. Uh, moving on to slide 37. Uh, continuando con la página 37. Matthew 21. Ahora vamos a Mateo 21. Matthew 21, verse 1 through 5. Mateo 21, versículo 1 al 5. Matthew 21. Ma Mateo 21, del uh, versículo 1 5. al 5. As they were approaching Jerusalem, they came to Bet Pegay. On the Mount of Olives, Yeshua sent two Talmudim with these instructions. Go into the village ahead of you, and you will immediately find a donkey tethered there with a colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him. The Lord needs them, and he will let them go at once. This happened in order to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, riding humbly on a donkey and on the cults, the offspring of the beast of burden. So we're focusing on verse 5. Uh, estamos enfocándonos en el versículo 5. About the king riding a donkey. Sobre el rey eh, en un asno. Kings normally don't ride donkeys. Uh, un rey no eh, monta un asno. So this is also to help you witness to a Jew. Uh, así que esto es para testificar a un judío. Okay, going on to slide number 38. Ahora, continuando con eh, la página 38. Let's look at ver, uh, Isaiah 62. Vamos a Isaías 62. We're going to look at verse 4 through 12. Versículo 4 al 12. Isaiah 62. Isaías 62. Verse 4 through 12. Versículo 4 al 12. Isaiah 62, verse 4 through 12. You will no longer be spoken of as... Azuvah, abandoned in your land, spoken of Shem, 
Shema. Rather, you will be called Hefziva, and your land Baula. For Adonai delights in you, and your land will be, and your land will be married. A young man, as a young man, marries a young woman. Your sons will marry, as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride. Your God rejoices over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Yerushalayim. They will never fall silent, either by day or by night. You who call him out and I, give yourselves no rest. And give to him no rest till it restores Yerushalayim and makes it a praise on the earth. And I have sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, never again will I give your grain to your enemies as food, nor strangers drink your wine for which you work so hard. But those who harvest the grain will eat it with praises to Adonai who gathered up, uh, gathered the wine, will drink it in the courtyard of the sanctuary. Go on through, go on through the gates, clear the way for the people, build up a highway, build it up, clear away the stones, raise a banner for the people. Adonai is proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, here is salvation here is your here's your salvation is coming here is the reward is with him and the recompense before him they will call them the holy people the redeemed of Adonai and you you will be called Drusha okay so look at verse um, 5 vamos a ver el versículo 5 as a young man marries a young woman, your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, your God will rejoice over you. So Yeshua calls himself the bridegroom. Así que Yeshua se llama, eh, se está llamando el esposo. And in verse 10, in el versículo 10, you see the prophecy of what Yeshua did when he rode into Jerusalem. Pueden ver la profecía cuando Yeshua entró a Jerusalén. Let me just take a quick look here. Uh, So just do one more here. The other ones you can look through if you get the, uh, the PowerPoint. Si pueden ver, si quieren estudiar, uh, pueden bajar las páginas aquí para estudiarlas. Voy a continuar con otra página aquí. Go to slide number 51. Vayan a la página 51. And turn to Matthew 26. Y vamos a Mateo 26. Matthew 26, verse 26 through 31. Mateo 26, del versículo 26 al 31. Matthew 26, verse 26. Mateo 26, versículo 26 al 31. Matthew 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Yeshua took a piece of matzah, made the bracha, broke it, and gave it to the Talmudian and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Also, he took a cup of wine, made a bracha, and gave it to them, saying, All of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which ratifies the renewed covenant, my blood shed on behalf of, so, of many, so that they may have their sins forgiven. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine again until the day I drink new wine with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hallel, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Yeshua then said to them, Tonight you will lose faith in me, as the Tanakh says. I will strike the shepherd dead, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Look at verse 31. Vamos a ver el versículo 31. Yeshua said to them, Tonight you will lose faith in me, as the Tanakh says. I will strike the shepherd dead, and the sheep of the flock will be uh, scattered. So let's look at how this is written in the Tanakh. Ahora vamos a ver cómo esto está escrito en el Viejo Testamento. Turn to Zechariah 13. Vamos a Zacarías uh, 15. 13. 13. Zechariah 13, verse 1 through 9. Zacarías 13, versículo 1 al 9. Zechariah 13, verse 1 through 9. 
When the day comes, a spring will open up for the house of David and the people living in Yerushalayim to cleanse them from sin and impurity. When the day comes, says Adonai Sivaot, I will cut off the very names of the idols of the land so that no one even remembers them anymore. I will also expel the false prophets and the spirit of uncleanness from the land. So that if anyone continues to prophesy, his own father and mother who brought him into the world will tell him, you cannot continue to live because you are speaking lies in the name of Adonai. And his own father and mother who brought him into the world will stab him to death. When that day comes, each one of the prophets will be shamed by his vision when, the pro when he prophesies. He will stop wearing his, a hair cloak and deceive people to deceive people. But instead he will say, I'm no prophet. I just worked the soil. Since my youth, I've only wanted to be an ordinary man. Someone asks him, Then what are these gashes between your shoulders? He will answer, I got hurt at my friend's house. Awake, sword against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me. Says Adonai Sivaot, Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I will turn my hand against the young ones. In time, throughout the land, says Adonai, two-thirds of those in it will be destroyed. They will die, but one-third will remain. That third part I will bring through the fire and will find them as silver is refined. I will test them as gold tested. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people. And they will say, Adonai is my God. Amen. So um, verse 6. Versículo 6. Talks about the, the whipping that Yeshua took. Habla sobre eh, la, las heridas que mantuvo eh, Yeshua. Because it says I got these gashes between my shoulders. Porque él dice que fue herido entre sus uh, dos hombros. You know, and remember Yeshua got whipped 39 times. Uh, Yeshua fue latigado 39 veces. Here in the, I'm sorry, in the uh, Reina Valera it says in, in between your hands, not between the shoulders. Yeah, that's that's closer to the that's, Hebrew. Okay, eso es más cercano al, al Hebreo, uh, donde está escrito en tus manos. Pero significa eh, la espalda. Okay, um, and specifically there it says I got hurt at my friend's house. Específicamente dice en la casa de mis amigos. Um, remember he calls Yeshua, uh, Yehuda friend. Uh, acuérdate que él llamó a Judas uh, amigo. And then it talks about striking the shepherd and scattering the sheep. Y habla sobre herir el pastor y el rebaño que se va a derramar. All right, let's, uh, Betsy. Una pregunta. Ahorita que el rabino nos dio este Mateo 26, 26 31. When, when you talked about uh, Matthew 26, 26 to 31. Que habla que dice que, que él es el que vendrá a tomar la copa de vino con nosotros. That he will be the one that drinks the cup of the vine with us. Ok, mi pregunta es, okay. es como lo, lo, lo because the Christians drink the wine every month. Remember it. Can, can you use this verse to tell them? No, that's specifically talking about Passover. Okay, eso habla sobre la Pascua. Because we're supposed to drink wine on the New Moon Festival. Porque deberíamos de tomar uh, vino en el festival de Rosh Kodesh, de la Luna Nueva. Uh, she says, uh, Yeah, well, the Rosh Kodesh would be every month. That's where they're getting it. El, uh, el primer día del, uh, del mes. Right? But they're still doing it on the wrong day. Pero como quiera lo hacen en el supposed día to be when the moon. Es cuando se cita la luna. All right, let's go to our last scripture for tonight. Vamos a la última escritura para ahora. M uh, slide number 55. Uh, slide 55. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's a little... Uh, Slide number 55. Página 55, por favor. Matthew 27. Mateo 27. Verse 33 through 37. Versículo 33 al 37. Matthew 27. Mateo 27. Verse 33 to 37. Versículo 33 al 37. Ah, uh, Brittany, you're getting a house over there. Okay. When they arrived at the place called Golgotha, they gave him wine mixed with bitter gall to drink, but after tasting it, he would not drink it. After they had nailed him to the stake, they divided his clothes among them by throwing dice. Then they sat down to keep watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written notice stating the charges, this is Yeshua, the King of the Jews. 
looking at verse 35, mirando el versículo 35, Uh, after they had nailed him to the stake, they divided his clothes among them by throwing dice, by casting lots. Okay. okay? Uh, dividieron su uh, vestidura uh, por echar suerte. Y okay, echando go to the suerte. next slide, the final slide. Vamos Verse a la, 56. Vamos a la uh, última página, página 56. Uh, turn to Psalm 22. Salmo 22, oh, like versículo 14. Al 22. Psalm 22. Salmo 22. Verse 14 through 22. Versículo 14 al 22. So is it 8, 10, or 8, 1? Brittany's typing dyslexic again. Nope. All right. You're uh, all wrong. It's page 534. Uh, <laughs> All right, Psalm 22, verse 14 through 22. This is the last scripture. Salmo 22, uh, 14 al 22. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax. It melts inside me. My mouth is dry as a fragment of a pot. My tongue sticks to my palate. You lay me down in the dust of death. Dogs are all around me. A pack of villains closes on me like a line at my hands and feet. I, can't, I can count every one of my bones while they gaze at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. From my clothing, clothing, they throw dice. But you, Adonai, don't stray far from me. Don't stay far away. My strength, come quickly to help me. Rescue me from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth. You have answered me from the wild, you have answered me from the wild bull's horns. I will proclaim your name to my kinsmen right there in the assembly. I will praise you. So this is all about Yeshua. Así que esto es todo sobre Yeshua. But now you understand it in context of the crucifixion. Pero ahora lo entiendes con el contexto sobre la crucific because, el crucifijo. Because it says in verse 14, my bones are out of joint. Porque dice en el versículo 14 que mis huesos se, se descoyuntaron. <laughs> What, what happens when you get crucified? ¿Qué pasa cuando eres crucificado? Your shoulders pop out. Tus uh, hombros uh, salen fuera. Los okay. uh, huesos. And then you see in verse 18, they gambled his clothes away. Y aquí podemos ver en el versículo 15, uh, right, 15? Uh, 18. No, 18, I'm sorry. Uh, 18, podemos ver que la ropa uh, echaron, sobre la ropa echaron suertes. And then finally in verse 22, y en el versículo 22, uh, proclaiming his Adonai's name to his kinsmen, proclamando el nombre de Jehová a sus, uh, al su pueblo. And when he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Cuando dijo, mi Dios, mi Dios, ¿por qué me has abandonado? Okay. So that's the end of this study for tonight. Así que esto es lo último del estudio All hoy right. en esta noche. Any questions or comments? Preguntas o comentarios? Over there on on uh, uh, the internet. Evelyn, you got any questions? Or Julio, you got any questions? Preguntas, anybody? And then Ben Jerry. Oh, about the first year to me. I said it was clear. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, very clear to me. Uh, I don't have any questions about that. All righty. Uh, Evelyn, do you have any questions? No, no questions. It was an awesome study, though. Yep. Yep. A lot to think about. Amen. Amen. Brittany, Brit my dyslexic typing friend. No, no questions. Study was all clear. Um, but actually, I mean, I, I mean it, it, some of the scriptures that you had. I found under a stern, uh, um, stern, so it was kind of, it was, it was easy to follow along. But good, it was a good study and all understood and clear. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool how everything works and comes together from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Amen. Mayaso Ma Corto, Eduardo, are you there? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, Robert. The study was good. Were you awake for any of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jen, do you have anything uh, to say or no? I don't like to be opening up a can of worms. I'm good. 
All right, let's pray and end our class. Um, we'll say breakfast from the children. Thank you, Anai, for your blessings. Today. Thank you, Anai, for your word. Thank you for giving us this gift. In your name, Yeshua. Amen.